Hello, so it's time for another monthly solar and energy stats video, but not only that, it's now been over a year since we had the solar and battery system installed, which means I've now got a full year of data that I can summarize into the first annual stats review, which I will put at the end of the video. So as a quick reminder of our system, uh, please check out these two videos. We've got the solar and battery system and the air to air heating system. So check those out if you uh, want a summary, those will be in the description for those of you who want to check those out. But uh, no, without further ado, let's go on with the monthly stats. So as always, we'll start with the monthly report from the Give Energy web portal, which I generated just now. And you can see we've generated 408.7 kilowatt hours this month. We're actually starting to get a couple of days that are just peaking above 20 kilowatt hours per day. So that's really good to see. Um, obviously there's still a few that are pretty rubbish, but as we move into spring, we're getting more and more good sunny days. So that's great. And if I scroll a little bit further down, you'll also see that our grid use is very slowly ticking down, getting lower and lower throughout the course of the month. And our export is actually starting to creep up a little bit. So we had a couple of days. I think this one might have been one of the DFS sessions, um, but uh, these later ones, these are um, just starting to peak through excess solar being exported during the day, um, which is great to see as well. So that will continue to improve um, during the rest of spring and into summer, which I'm look very much looking forward to. And if I scroll up to the top, we've got my favorite little energy flow diagram here. And as you can see, the solar is starting to pick up. The grid is starting to shrink a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's all looking really good. So how did that value of 408 kilowatt hours stack up against the PVGIS estimate that I've been using to assess the uh, performance of our solar system? Well, almost bang on the expected, which is um, quite surprising, really. I've had some people say that um, March was a bit low for them. So uh, I'm uh, impressed that we managed to achieve what was ostensibly a pretty standard month for March. And here's our monthly consumption. You can see that we're starting to reduce the amount of heating that we're needing and even the amount of hot water that uh, that we used is a little bit lower. That's probably because we were away for a few days in March and that meant obviously we used a little bit less hot water and a little bit less heating. We did continue to run the heating a little bit while we were away um, just to keep the chill off so that uh, the house didn't cool down too much and when we got home we were able to um, heat the house back up nice and quick. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise everything's pretty standard. 226 for our standard base load house usage. 94 kilowatt hours for our EV, which um, is a little bit more than the previous month, but in line with um, most of the previous months um, before that. 274 kilowatt hours for the heating, 134 kilowatt hours for the hot water. The, uh, um, what is this? This is the dehumidifiers at 23.6 kilowatt hours and the towel rails at 13.8 kilowatt hours, giving a total of 767 kilowatt hours. So it's starting to tick down uh, into summer and that's going to, uh, well, this um, heating is more or less going to disappear uh, from April onwards. And uh, yeah, once we've got our uh, Mixergy uh, integrated heat pump cylinder installed, this hot water chunk should dramatically reduce as well. So I'm interested to see uh, how the overall energy consumption progresses into the summer and uh, obviously you will be the first to know about it. So as far as the heating is concerned the value of 274 kilowatt hours was very slightly lower than what I would normally expect for this time of year in March um, but that was probably partly due to the fact that we were away for a few days as I said but also in addition to that it was very slightly milder than you'd normally expect for this time of year with the temp temperature averaging across the month about one degree warmer for uh, for our part of the world here in Gloucestershire. So that probably accounts for um, the uh, very slightly lower than expected uh, heating demand. So just before we move on to the annual summary, this is the monthly estimated savings for the last year's worth of data. And you can see that this month we saved £165 relative to what it would have cost us if we didn't have all of this, uh, this system in place. So our actual bill is around £54, which is uh, starting to head towards the negative territory. I'm hoping that that will happen next month. Um, but our equivalent bill, which is what it would have cost us if we didn't have all the system, would have been £218. So uh, you can see that that uh, is a pretty decent saving once again. Our DFS uh, savings was only £1.30, which uh, basically almost not worth even bothering with. So uh, I think um, towards the end of, of the um, winter period, uh, the ESO, uh, National Grid ESO, essentially gave up on the uh, on these sorts of uh, DFS sessions. So not really sure what they got planned next year. Um, I think Octopus have got have had some 
things to say regarding that. So um, let's see what happens with that next year. But yeah, we 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 know we're near reached the uh, the heady heights of uh, eighty five pounds earned during uh, during December for the rest of the uh, the winter. So well, never mind. Uh, such is life. But uh, yeah, in terms of uh, the annual um, summary, let's move on to that now. So here's the annual summary for the first year of operation of our full system. Now we didn't quite hit net zero bill for the for the full year. In fact, we spent on in total two hundred and fifteen pounds, which I'm going to say is still pretty good for a full year's worth of energy. Uh, now the equivalent cost would have been closer to two thousand four hundred pounds if we didn't have the system. If we still had our petrol car and if we still had gas for our central heating and hot water. But um, now that we've got uh, electric uh, heating, electric hot water, um, we've replaced our our gas hob with a induction hob and obviously we've got the solar and the battery and we've got an EV so uh, accounting for all of that get, getting down to 214 pounds means that we only spent just under nine percent of what we would have spent if we didn't have um, the full system in place so I'm going to count that as a, a significant win uh, it cost us roughly uh, 14,000 pounds to get the solar installed and about eight and a bit thousand for the for the um, heating system so uh, you know that will uh, take us a little while to pay off still probably 12 years or so but um, I'm going to say that uh, I'm pretty pleased with that overall and quite happy with uh, with the way things are going. So how did the level of generation compare with what we would expect from the PVGIS system? Well we generated 5,307 kilowatt hours where we would have uh, expected to have generated 5,164 so very slightly up on what we would expect so that's good to see I mean the PVGIS is an estimate of course so you know there's plenty of uh, assumptions baked into that um, um, but it's good to see that we're not a million miles away our consumption was however 8,166 kilowatt hours so we have a deficit of nearly 3,000 kilowatt hours uh, I'm wondering whether or not I can add a little bit of extra generation. That's going to be a whole separate video, by the way, so look out for that one. Um, but you can see of that uh, 8,166 kilowatt hours that, are, that we consumed, the heating accounted for 2,321 of those kilowatt hours. So that's by far the biggest fraction, followed closely by the hot water, which was 1,652 kilowatt hours. And then the EV bringing up uh, third place with 1,130 kilowatt hours. So in combination with uh, of those three, um, those three things accounted for more than 60% of all of our generation with the house taking the remaining 3,063 kilowatt hours. So uh, yes, that's really uh, interesting. I, you know, obviously I would like this deficit to, to drop to zero or negative in the future. Um, we shall see about that uh, based on what we might be able to do with adding extra generation, as I said. But for now, I'm uh, pleased with that first year of performance. Hopefully you found that interesting. And uh, if you uh, would like to support the channel and you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. But for now, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.